All right, today we're gonna to talk about birds. So of course I'm at home and uh, I don't have a lot of time today to really edit this lecture. I'm gonna to try to get it out here as quickly as I can for you guys so you'll have it. And you might hear some stray kid noises in the background and that's okay. But what I really wanna talk about are birds, the extent archosaurs. Now of course that also includes the crocodiles as well. But birds are a really cool group of animals. And I love this picture of a roseate spoonbill next to an alligator. Only in about Florida would you ever see something like that. So, here are some learning objectives. Basically, the main thing today is I want you to be able to discuss the evolution of birds from dinosaurs. What are the different hypotheses about birds? And, of course, know some of the defining characters of birds and the origins of feathers. Because that's kind of important. Because right now, feathers make a bird. So, just as a reminder... Birds are archosaurs, and when we look at all of Sauropsida, there are two major lineages. The Lepidosauria, which we've already seen with the snakes, lizards, and the Tuatara, and then the archosaurs, or the ruling lizards, which includes uh, turtles, either sister to it or nested somewhere in there, of course, crocodiles, pterosaurs, the dinosaurs, and of course, the birds that evolved from the dinosaurs as well. This is our archosaur phylogeny. And if you look far to your right, you see birds. And birds are a type of theropod dinosaur. One of the cool things about archosaurs, they are the first vertebrate to evolve flight. And they did it twice. They evolved it, of course, with the pterosaurs and with birds. And one thing, you often hear the word pterodactyl. Pterodactyl means like winged finger. And pterodactyl is a genus of pterosaurs. So there is good evidence that birds descended from dinosaurs. Now, as I've said earlier, theropods were these, uh, they were bipedal, which means they walked on two legs. And we have now discovered feathered dinosaurs, which means that feathers evolved before flight. And the question is, why did dinosaurs evolve feathers? And this, of course, is oviraptor. And we need to change the name of this poor animal. Ova means egg. Raptor means like eater. When they discovered this dinosaur bent over her nest, they thought that she was caught in the act of eating the eggs during this landslide. In reality, it was a female and she was protecting her eggs as they were from this landslide and she was being a good mom and we called her over raptor. We need to fix that. All right, I digress. Theropods evolved dinosaurs, which were later used for flight. And it was thought for years that fossils, especially old fossils, like from 6,500 million years ago, did not have any type of molecular or organic molecules associated with them. There'd be no proteins, no DNA, no nothing, uh, no organic molecules. Well, that turns out to be wrong. Our ability to detect molecules at tiny levels is incredible these days. And we are actually uh, pulling molecules off of ancient fossils, including proteins and other pigments. Now, this is somewhat controversial, but I think these labs are trying to be very careful about it. And in one cool study, they did pull collagen off of a T-Rex. And that collagen, guess what, was related to birds. So that's another line of evidence that uh, dinosaurs are related to birds or birds evolved from dinosaurs. So... Feathers evolved first. So why why evolve a feather? Well, there's different uh, ideas about why or hypotheses. One is thermal regulation. I mean, think about this. You can take a little chickadee. These things are tiny little birds. You can go up to the top of the mountains in the wintertime. I'm out there in a giant winter coat, freezing my butt off trying to photograph them. And there's these little chickadees that weigh a few grams running around in the cold or flying around in the cold. And they can do that because their feathers are amazing at insulation. Another reason, sexual selection. Okay, uh, female choice has really driven a lot of crazy things in biology. So it is possible that feathers evolved for some type of sexual selection. And then eventually feathers, whether or not they were thermal regulation, sexual selection, both. They, I mean, they're not mutually exclusive at all were then uh, co-opted into flight, and we call that an exaptation. Now, an exaptation basically is where you create a structure for one purpose, it gets used for another purpose. So if you're evolving feathers for thermal regulation, you evolve them to use flight, that'd be an example of exaptation. 
And I must remind you that evolution is, is never forward looking, right? It's a it's reacting to what's happening into the past. So you'd never evolve a structure going, oh, I'll evolve these feathers for insulation. Oh, but now we can use it for flight in the future. No, no, no. We've also discovered fossils as early as the 1860s. I mean, right after Darwin published The Origin of Species, he predicted, hey, we're going to find transitional fossils. And sure enough, in the 1860s and near Hamburg, Germany, they discovered Archaeopteryx. Archaeopteryx is a great transitional organism. It clearly could fly. We can look at the feathers of it. It had teeth, whereas modern birds do not have teeth. Believe it or not, they actually have the genes for teeth. They're just useless and don't work and been turned off. They also have a bony tail in this Archaeopteryx. Modern day birds do not have a bony tail. And this animal has claws like a dinosaur. Modern day birds, with the exception of uh, Pistiformes, which is a screamer, are the, other than that, the other 10,000 species don't have any type of claws. So this animal is a transition between a theropod dinosaur and a bird. And this is what it looked like. Uh, this is an artistic rendition. And this is a lot less artistic license than you would think. It's actually fairly accurate because believe it or not, they have actually pulled pigments from the feathers of this bird showing that it was probably dark and crow-like. So how did birds evolve from dinosaurs? You know, how did flight evolve? And one of the things is these theropod dinosaurs were all carnivores, which means they were active. They were running on two legs. And over t evolutionary time, they got smaller and smaller and smaller. And eventually, they took to the trees and became arboreal. Now, a lot of people have speculated that birds evolve from the ground up, which means you're running, 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 and you leap into the air and start flying. Think about road runners. Or are you gliding? Are you arboreal up in the trees? And then you start gliding from tree to tree and you evolve flight like that. And that would be the, the gliding hypothesis. Now, if you were to go back to the Cretaceous, you would go between 65 million years ago and about 150 million years ago. Let's go back to about 100 million years ago. There were these cool lineage of birds. They're all extinct called, let's see if I can say this, Enantiornithes. Okay, for all of you organic chemistry buffs, Enantioforms, uh, all right, all right. I know Enantomers, that's bringing up some bad memories, but Enantomers, of course, are, let me go at, they're mirror images but they're non-superimposable mirror images. Enantiornithes, ornithes means bird, enant means opposite. And the reason why is their shoulder was built the opposite of modern day birds through convergent evolution resembled many of our modern day birds. These ones had teeth, so that's pretty cool. So modern feathers today are made up of beta keratin. Uh, we have keratin, you know, they're very strong structures and they allow for flight. Of course, this is a Western screech owl that we caught down in the Kofa National Wildlife Refuge down in Arizona. So it's giving us a stink eye because we caught it and we're holding it and I'm taking pictures of its wings. And it's pretty cool when you see these guys fly, you can't hear them at all. Feathers today are like basically the defining character of birds. I mean, this is what makes birds unique are feathers. And they are um, quite diverse. Uh, some are used for flight, some are used for insulation, some are for display. Some of them actually are right around the mouth and can help the flycatchers collect insects. So basically you have the vein, you've got a ratchet, you've got barbs, and then you've got the hollow shaft that holds it together. So there are different types of feathers, of course. You have vein versus down feathers. Down feathers are what we like to make our down sleeping bags out of, down jackets. And the downs, so they're very, very, very soft. So a wing feather on the left, that is a flight feather. Notice it's asymmetric. What I mean is the leading edge, so when a bird is flying, the leading edge is shorter and the trailing edge is longer. You got down feathers. The one on the bottom is a tail feather. Then you have contour feathers, semiplumes, bristles, and uh, filler plumes as well. And the bristles, like I said, are often right around the beak and they help birds catch insects on the flight. So this of course is our wing feather. You've got the ratchet right down the middle of it with the barbs holding the feathers together. And the calamus of course is where it attaches. And this is a tail from a roofed grouse. Notice it is symmetrical around the ratchet. So feathers, of course they're used for flight, but they're also used for display. 
They're used for camouflage and they're used for insulation as well. Okay, the evolution of flight. As feathers evolve for flight, there are also major changes to the skeleton of birds. One of them is, if you notice, we have, oh, let me get it right here, we have uh, one bone, two bone, lots of bones here in our radius, ulna, carpals, metacarpals, phalanges. If you notice, there's a humerus on this animal. There is a radius in the ulna. And then all the carpals and metacarpals are fused together like this. And that fusing of together does several things. It makes them strong and it makes them lighter. Also, parts of, so the whole rear is, is, is all fused together to get, make it much more lighter and much stronger. And you can see the large keel on the breast. That keel is used for muscle attachments. So imagine we've got our chest and we've got our pecs and our pecs are attached to our, our breastplate. And in us, imagine if we had this giant keel with all these muscles attached to it. That's what birds do for increased flight muscles. So if humans had flight muscles, we would have pecs the size of chickens. Another potential exaptation to birds is the one-way lung. Remember, we think that the one-way lung is, a, is an ancestral condition to archosaurs. And the reason why is because uh, we think archosaurs, especially the dinosaurs, became dominant in the Triassic over the synapsids because of low oxygen. And having a one-way lung is, of course, much more efficient at gas exchange. So if you've got 15% um, oxygen in the atmosphere compared to 30% a few millions of years earlier, of course, the dinosaurs are primed to become dominant. And that one-way lung also primed the birds for flight, which is, of course, very energy demanding and you need lots of oxygen for flight okay birds uh are quite amazing it's a you know you've got a wing you got two legs and you got feathers and a beak right and like yet there's ten thousand species of birds and some of them are completely marine and and can't even fly others are amazing flyers they eat insects they eat seeds they eat fruit they eat fish i mean birds are just incredibly diverse in what they can do with the bill and one of my favorites is look at the flamingo on the top right for filter feeding versus, you know, a skimmer on the bottom left. So birds can have highly specialized bills, allowing them to exploit many different niches. And of course, their feet are also very different as well. You can have on the top right, there's a golden eagle. I mean, latch on to prey. I mean, these guys can fly off of the house cat if they wanted to. Longer toes, like on the left, are for walking on mud like a heron. In fact, some small Herons can actually walk on lily pad leaves. Then on the bottom left, you've got like a sparrow. You ever notice a lot of songbirds perch on trees? So when they land down, their tendon pulls their, their toes tight and uh, they're able to perch on wires and on branches. Uh, you've got ducks, gulls, pelicans have all independently evolved webbing between their feet so they can swim. And then you've got things like roadrunners and ostriches that are very good at running as well. Okay, and that's it for the introduction to birds today. Sorry, it's a bit truncated, but uh, trying to get these videos out for you.